Here we are, back with more Mesa Sports Insider. We have two weeks of sports updates to give you, so let's jump right into it. As you know, I'm Dan Ward. This is Mesa Sports Insider. The last time we talked about the women's soccer team, they were at the top of the conference with a 2-0 record. Since then, they have played four games, two on the road and two at home. After defeating Dayton 2-1 to one earlier in the month, they went on the road for a long road trip distance-wise to take on UMass and St. Louis. In the UMass game, the Patriots and the Minute Women battled through the first 45 minutes of play. UMass struck first early in the second, however, off a free kick, becoming yet another team to exploit the Patriots' fouls and score on a set play. But the Patriots responded only 17 minutes later, with Alex Myers netting her fourth goal of the season. This game would need overtime, and with the first overtime period going by the wayside, it looked like this game would end in a tie. However, sophomore Emily Littell had other plans as she netted her first collegiate goal from 15 yards out through heavy traffic in the 107th minute of play, giving the Patriots the 2-1 lead and improving their record to 3-0 in conference play. Coach Bramble was very happy with Littell scoring the game winner, saying, quote, there's not a more deserving player on our team to have scored a goal in such dramatic fashion. So the team was now on a five-game winning streak and traveled into the central time zone for the first time this season to take on the Billikens. The win against the Minute Women did not come without some bumps and bruises, and that, combined with the long travel, clearly affected the Patriots in this game. Mason was simply outplayed in every category, and the Billikens cruised to a 4-0 victory, snapping the Patriots' winning streak and giving them their first conference loss of the season. This was also the first win for St. Louis over Mason in four games. Fortunately for the Patriots, the road trip was over with St. Louis, and they returned home for the first of a two-game homestand on Thursday, where they entered the season with a 6-2 record at home. The competition did not get any easier, however, as they had to take on the reigning A-10 champions and, at the time, undefeated Duquesne Dukes. The Dukes got going early, nearly scoring in the first minute of the game as junior Linnea Facenda hit the post on a shot from 15 yards out. This was the best opportunity for the Dukes as the two teams were held scoreless through 45 minutes. The two teams were neck and neck in the second half with a good portion of the game being played around midfield. Duquesne did register more shots on goal than Mason at a 7-1 clip, but this game would need overtime as well the second in three games for the Patriots. The overtime period was dominated by Duquesne, and they finished off the game in the 99th minute when sophomore Abby Losko netted her fourth goal of the season on a low shot from 18 yards out to give the first place Dukes their sixth straight win and the Patriots their second straight loss. This was only the second two-game losing streak of the season for the Patriots, but it was the first time they had been shut out in back-to-back -back games. Coach Brand will emphasize on getting the team focused for the second game of the home stand, a Sunday afternoon matchup against a weaker Davidson Wildcats team. Mason sent out its usual starting lineup for this game. The first half was dominated by the Patriots as far as time of possession is controlled, but Davidson's backline defense played very well to keep the Patriots off the board for the fifth straight half. The second half, that was very different, however. The team stopped playing with what the defense was giving and instead played to their strengths. The shutout streak was ended early in the second half thanks to Aaron Mitchell, who received a perfect pass and found the back of the net. Charging up. Sends it across. Mitchell is there. Mitchell heads it on in. And they score! Mitchell and the Patriots weren't done there. As a few minutes later, Mitchell found the back of the net once more. Coming all the way into the box, takes a chip shot. It's headed in by Mitchell, and she scores! But hey, why stop at two goals? This time, Mitchell stepped aside to allow her teammate Abby Downey, who had assisted on her goal prior, to shine bright, picking up her third goal of the season and third goal of the game. And the Patriots finally wrapped up their scoring later in the half with their fourth goal of the game, coming from Aaron Mitchell to complete the hat trick. Sending it into the box, Mitchell. Mitchell has the hat trick. This was exactly the rebound the Patriots were looking for as they shut out the Wildcats and improved to 4-2 and two in conference play. It was getting a little scary there for the women's team. Just a minor hiccup in the otherwise excellent season that they've been having thus far. And clearly it was fixed with that big win over Davidson. 
This is by far the team to watch for and cheer for if you're a Mason Patriot fan. They are now 4-2 in the conference, as I had said, and they have nearly solidified their spot in the A-10 tournament. They currently sit alone in fifth place in the conference standings, and a fifth win would guarantee a spot in the playoffs. It only took four wins to make the playoffs last year. This team, though, I'm sure wants to win as many games as possible. The 10 season wins that they already have is the most since 2010, and the seven wins at home is three more than they had all of last season, and they still have one more game to go. With all that being said, the A-10 playoffs are being held in Kingston, Rhode Island, so there's no need to worry about having a higher seed in order to gain home field advantage. It may be an advantage for the team, once they know for sure that they're in the playoffs, to rest some of their players and play them less in the last few games so that they are ready for the playoffs. Depth has been an issue all year. Teams are starting to exploit that, so when the opportunities arise, it might be better off for Coach Todd Bramble to take them and rest his players. We'll see what he does. The team begins a three-game road trip this Thursday at VCU. Last time we saw the men's team, they had dropped their season over against VCU. Since then, they have had three games, the first a home game against St. Joseph's. The men's team had the advantage in the early going, recording the first five shots of the game and looking like a revamped team. However, in the 23rd minute, the Hawks broke through the defense and senior Maury Deanne found his way into the box to score his second goal of the season. The lead wouldn't hold for long as a nice set piece from Henning Dirks found the head of Colin Hunter, who netted the equalizer in the 31st minute for his first goal of the year. The teams went into halftime tied, tied at one. Despite the Patriots having the overall shot advantage in the game, it would be the Hawks who found the back of the net for the eventual game winner in the 59th minute, giving the Patriots their third straight loss. So the Patriots would try it again from home, this time in the middle of the week, a Wednesday night game against revolutionary rival George Washington. Unfortunately, the team of old showed up for the Patriots here, a team that struggled on offense as lackluster play in the first half led to a three-goal first half for the George Washington Colonials. That would be all that GW would need as the Patriots couldn't score once again, being shut out yet again this season and dropping their fourth straight game 3 to nothing to George Washington. So at 0-3 in the conference, the Patriots would hit the road to take on St. Louis. Now unlike the women's team, the travel didn't get to the men as they battled well with the Billikens. It was looking bad early with the Billikens scoring in the first 10 minutes, but it acted as a wake-up call for Mason, who turned it around and scored in the 36th minute to tie things up. But, once again, one goal is all the Patriots seem to be able to score this season. St. Louis found the game winner late in the second half and defeated the Patriots 2-1, dropping their conference record to 0-4. To say the least, not a great couple of weeks for the men's soccer team. So now we are starting to get to that point of when do we start playing for next year? The season has obviously, clearly, not gone the way that anybody has expected for the men's soccer team. They're the only team without a conference win right now, sitting at 0-4. The 2013 A-10 champs have clearly fallen off dramatically. There is a mathematical chance that they can still make the playoffs, but one more loss would almost definitely knock them out of contention. So with that, when does head coach Greg Andrulis start making preparations for the team that's going to be here next year? Is he start sitting the seniors and maybe sitting some of the starters or does he allow them to play in their final year is he going to start allowing some other players who are going to be on the team next year to get some more experience late in this season so that way they are more ready for next year not really sure what the answer is going to be i know the team's still fighting as long as there's a mathematical chance you'll see what the answer is potentially this week when they take on lasalle here at home at george mason stadium the volleyball team had three games over the course of this final two weeks, still looking for that first A-10 conference win of the season. They had two games on the road and one at home. The first game at VCU wasn't their best game. They fell pretty handedly 3-0 to VCU in Richmond. The game of note, however, was their next game, which was at Davidson. This was a five-set battle in which the Wildcats would squeak out the win, but it came with numerous recognitions and highlights and achievements. Each set was decided by two points, except the second set, which was only decided by three points. Now, although the Wildcats won, this would arguably be the best game played by the Patriots in the program's history. The team set a program record 123 digs in the five set match, 46 of them going to Katie Espinoza, a career high for her. She also had a career high in assists with 12 in the game. Tiffany Clark had a career high in 23 kills, 
while freshman Bailey Williams set a career high in numerous categories, kills, digs, and service errors. So, following the career day, the momentum was on the Patriots' side, and they looked to display that at home against the George Washington Colonials. Several errors in quick succession by Mason allowed for a four-point lead for George Washington at 12-8 after what has been a competitive start to the opening set and forced head coach Jackie Simpson Kerr to take her first time out. Still not pleased by what she saw on the court, the second season head coach did not hesitate to bring her players back in the huddle soon after with the Colonials still up by four, 16-12. This seemed to do the trick, however, as the George Washington momentum was sliced as they committed more and more errors while winning only one of the following nine points, a service error by the Patriots. This resulted in the largest lead for Mason of the set, 20-17, to 17, and the set would end with a Tiffany Clark to kill to give the Patriots the 1-0 lead. Set two began with a 4-0 Mason lead thanks to two kills from Williams and good serving from another freshman, defensive specialist Kendall Hall. The Patriots would roll in this set, easily finishing off the Colonials 25-22 and taking a commanding two sets to none lead. Then the intermission, which is here in conference play, seemed to work wonders for GW. In what was a close third set through the first 20 points, GW went on a 10-5 run to take the third set 25-17. Mason still in good position up 2-1 in the fourth set. The score was all tied up at 11 with it being a race to 25. It was close all the way through, but just like the first set, the closing stage of the fourth set was a test of nerves and composure in which George Washington had the final say as an ace by lot and a block by Oshikuwu and setter Emily Clemens back-to-back -back took the match into both teams' second consecutive five-set contest, 25-23. Patriots were out of confidence and out of gas in this fifth set as George Washington won the final set 15-19. Thus, the Colonials snapped a 10-match losing streak and picked up their first Atlantic 10 Conference win of the season, while the Patriots dropped to 0-7 in conference play. There were high hopes, but this clearly is just not the year for the women's volleyball team. We can say that they are better than their record shows, but then again, part of a good team is one that can close out games and pick up wins. They have a very strong core of freshmen and sophomores, so the future is bright for the team, just not this year. It is nice, however, to see senior Tiffany Clark have success in her final year despite the team's struggles. She leads the team in kills and in second in blocks. Fellow senior Caitlin Hipsher leads the team in assists with 384 as she and Kelly Shaler continue to split time on the floor. The team will continue to look for its first conference win this Friday as they host Davidson. So now we move on to the swimming and diving team. They had multiple matches over the last two weeks. The first was a dual meet against Navy and UMBC in Maryland. But this was not the best of matches for either of the teams. Both teams lost to Navy and UMBC pretty handily, but there were some bright spots despite the big losses. Sydney Fisher continues to impress as a senior, winning the 50-yard freestyle with a time of 23.4 seconds and finished second in the 100-yard freestyle with a time of 52.02 both of those times are the fastest among A-10 swimmers this year. So bright signs moving forward for Fisher and the Patriots in those um, matches. The men also recorded a first place finish with Attila Kiss in the 500 yard freestyle, finishing in 4 minutes 37.71 seconds. But quickly they got back in the pool looking to turn things around. They took on Delaware this past week and the result was much better. Patriots swept the Blue Hens with the women's team winning 167 to 127 and the men 184 to 114. The men won both relays in six individual events with Stephen Craig leading the way, winning the 1,000 yard freestyle. The women won nine individual events and both relays with Rachel Williams, Aaron Schultz, Sarah Brawlier, and Dorothy Riley all picking up first place finishes. Mason also won both diving events in their dominating performance. So one bad week and one great week for the swimming and diving team. Which week will they have next as they take on Richmond and the Richmond Duels this week? But now we move on to the cross country teams who competed in the Vert Cross Invitational in Kernersville, North Carolina. The men's team had great success once again with their top five runners finishing in the top 32 and only 34 seconds apart. This was a strong enough showing for a first place finish in the race, finishing 19 points ahead of second place Duke, Grayson Morgan, Brett Coulter, Logan Miller. Adam LaFemina and Luke Sharkey were the top five runners for the first place Patriots team. The women also had a strong showing. They finished sixth out of 20 teams. 
The two top runners on the season were, once again, the two top runners in this race, Sierra Donahue and Amber Hawkins. They finished 8th and 15th, respectively, and there was a strong showing from some of the freshman runners, which is always a good sign to see. This was the last race before the A-10 Championships, which will take place on October 29th in Mechanicsville, Virginia. We also saw the conclusion of the fall season for the women's tennis team. Women's tennis team competed at the Navy Blue and Gold Invitational. This three-day tournament consisted of 11 teams, so the success from the Patriots varied in each flight and each round as they faced different opponents from different schools. Head coach Steve Curtis likes this event, saying, quote, This is probably the strongest tournament we play during the season. It gives us a benchmark to see where we still need improvement, both individually as players and collectively as a team. So we will see which team stands and where they stand later in the year. For now, they will host the Campus Showdown and an alumni event to finish off the fall schedule, both of which are friendlies. The rowing team opened up their fall season as they did last year at the Okokwin Chase, where they finished first and second at the Varsity 8 Plus event on Sunday. Boat A finished in just 19 minutes and was led by freshman coxswain Shelby Rain and rower Maria Justiniano. They did not have as much success in the Varsity 4 Plus event, however, but it was definitely a good start to the year. We'll have more updates on the rowing team as the year progresses. And of course, last but not least, we got prepared for the upcoming basketball seasons this past weekend at Mason Madness. Hopefully you guys were all there. The Green Machine was rocking like they always do, proving why they are the number one pep band in the country. The women's basketball team showed off some of their skills with an excellent display of three-point shooting. And for the men's team, freshman Troy Tamara rocked Eagle Bank Arena with some very impressive dunks in the men's dunk contest. There's a lot of excitement surrounding these two teams and surrounding this upcoming season. Your first chance to take a look at them will be in November. The women's team opens up with a home game on November 11th, and the men's team will play right after them on November 12th. But that'll just about do it for our update, so let's take a look at this week's upcoming schedule. First, we'll take a look at the road matches for the Patriots. The swimming and diving team will be traveling to Richmond Friday and Saturday for the Richmond Duels. Rowing, meanwhile, heads to the head of the Charles race Saturday and Sunday at Cambridge, Massachusetts. And women's soccer has a very important road trip ahead of them trying to get that fifth conference win. They'll play Thursday at VCU at 7 p.m. and then Sunday at George Washington at 1 p.m. Now for the home matches, chances for the Patriots. Men's and women's tennis hosting the Campus Showdown Saturday and Sunday. Meanwhile, you can take a look at the women's volleyball team this Friday versus Davidson at 7 or Saturday versus VCU at 7. And then men's soccer has a lone home game Saturday night against LaSalle at 7 p.m. Come out and support all your teams. If you can't make it to the home games, you can always tune in and watch them live on Mason Cable Network Channel 8.1 and streaming online on the A10 Network. So that'll do it for this week's episode of Mason Sports Insider. I know it was a lot for us to catch up on. Columbus Day made us push back one of the weeks, but we're back in action and we'll have as many updates, if not fewer, for you next week. But we'll be right back to our schedule next week. If you liked what you saw, leave us a like on YouTube if you're watching the video there. Otherwise, be sure to check out all of our episodes and check out Mason Cable Network's YouTube channel for more Mason Cable Network shows. But until next time, I am Dan Ward saying so long, God bless, and go Patriots.